again and welcome to Match Talk. I'm Tammy Simmons Garthway. And I'm Carla Garrick. And oh my God, I look like Quasimodo all week long. Aww. I, it, the most, I have, allergies make me nuts. And for the last couple of years, the spring allergies have just made my eyes unbearable. And literally I was waking up and you know, your thin, your skin is thin on your eyelids and underneath. So I would wake up with like oh, all like full. the rubbing, yeah. But even if I wasn't, like, I look like Quasimodo. So, and there's and, <laughs> no one can tell from no, there because I mean, it's well, SD it's much better and, like, today. Blurry. I mean, I'm like, <laughs> you know, you do the nasal sprays and the eye drops, but then everything's like literally my eye just is running while I'm sleeping. So then you just get dry. So, um, it's awful. Are you, you know, I was thinking about it just recently because I had, you know, I got jabbed for that school thing in 2008 yeah. and then developed allergies yeah. that I'd never had, yeah. moved to New Hampshire, was like Completely allergic yep. to everything for so long. And actually, I mean, I'm taking maybe like every other day I'm taking a Zyrtec, yep. but I'm out there like working it the did, garden, did, doing all of that. I mean, and I think it has to do with whether your body's inflamed, whether you're like, it, uh, I hate to say it. Are you eating right? Well, I, 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 think it's, I think I do think that's some of it. I do think some of us just have. I mean, I have had terrible allergies all my life. I am just surprised. I know that allergies should tend to be cyclical, like a seven-year cycle. So people who didn't have allergies say, "I never had allergies. I don't understand." And then I think about my allergies as a kid are completely different. I mean, they were much worse. But it, they've shifted. Like spring right now, I mean, the pollen count this week was insane. So it makes sense that they're, you know, it's not like I'm randomly having flame ups with right. low pollen count. Yep. But it's tree pollen, which is funny because as a kid, I was allergic to tree pollen. <laughs> so, anyways, it's well, just um, other guess... than my eyes, I don't feel like my allergies, knock on wood, are all that bad. Don't knock on wood. Compared, our one fan on I, Facebook you know, will I'm be not, like, what? I'm not sneezing, con you know, like it's right. just my freak. And I, we were camping this weekend. And to be honest, I think something, I think out external stuff get in and then your system reacts. So we had um, campfire on Friday night and campfire on Saturday night. And it, on Sunday, my eyes were highly irritated. Mm. And I'm wondering if the wood we were burning. Oh, it could be. Just, just enough that then boom. And then it took days for it to, anyways. Yeah, anyway, I, I, I I'm, I'm super excited. I shared something on my Twitter this morning. It was um, Rick. Oh God, I'm gonna blank out. Rick Rubin, is that a person? Yeah. Anyway, I think he was a very big man yeah. who just lost 150 pounds. And it was, I think he's on the cover of GQ or something yeah. this month. And so someone had posted a tweet being like, this is how he did it. Yeah. And so I reshared it and I was kind of like, well, I did it too on a smaller scale, yeah. you know, but boom, boom, boom here because allergies are such a... They're temperamental. Yeah. And they're just, I mean, they actually really, really negatively impact your your uh, oh, I, your daily well, life, I your mean, quality I have, of I've, living. I, so. When my allergies are really bad, especially the eyes, because you don't, you don't think about it until it's happening. How right. How disorientating wanna, it is yeah. because... You just want to sleep. One, because when you're sleeping, your eyes don't I'm, hurt. But that's not true. I sleep, and like that's what I was noticing. Like I oh, could no. feel it on my pillow. Oh God, crazy. <laughs> so, anyways, enough about my allergies. That's why, I, if I oh. look like Quasimodo, that's why. Because well, you I, don't. I and... felt like Quasimodo. Um, I did bring a couple things. I Me do, too. I want to do good thing, like b relatively good thing first, okay? Okay. Um, so there is, I got this postcard in the mail and I already knew about this. This is the Transit to Trails program put on by the Nature Conservancy, Manchester Transit, New Hampshire Audubon, Fresh, Rocks, Fresh Start Farms, New Hampshire State Parks, and the Manchester Department of Parks and Rec. And I knew about it because one of them involves the Piscataqua River Park. So that's kind of cool. Uh, Transit to Trans is a seasonal program providing free transportation from Veterans Memorial Park, downtown, to walking and hiking trails, state parks, and water destinations to Manchester residents. Um, this season, you can find information on nature.org forward slash transit to trails and age. I'm sure if you just go to transit to trails, Manchester, it'll bring it up. But what it is, is on June 3rd, they're going to Pawtuckaway State Park. 
on July 1st is the Manchester City Parks Day, and I believe, I'm going off of memory, they're going to do Shaheen Basquill Park, um, the Reiko Theodore Pool, the Piscataqua River Park, so that people can see that there's trails there, and I, I'm going to forget what the other one was. Um, August 5th, they go to Bear Brook State Park. September 2nd, the New Hampshire Audubon at the at Massabesic. And on October 7th, 7th, they'll go back to Pawtuckaway State Park. So anyways, I thought it was funny that I got... Oh, that's um, nice. They depart the... Tr they depart the... Tr hmm. They depart... The Information Center at Memorial Park, Veterans Memorial Park on Elm Street at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. And then on the Manchester Day with another departure at 1. So you have three different times. You can hop on the bus and they'll um, bring you to these destinations. You can walk the trails over at the Piscataqua River Park or swim at Reiko Theater and then get on the bus again and go back for free. So that's kind so of neat. So that's neat. I did also notice I was out on uh, the rail trail the other day on the west side and there's a cleanup group. Hold it up. Oh. Oh, the trails oh. to transit. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so he can zoom in and show people where the dates are. Oh, there we go. Yes. There fancy. we go. <laughs> See this, this right here? Um, Nature.org forward slash transit to trails NH. But there's definitely, uh, they're definitely doing some kind of uh, elderly walk. Yes, there's a senior walk also. Yeah, so um, I, I just ran into them the yeah. other day. It was kind of cool because there was a cop on a bike and there was a cop on a horse and yeah. my dog had never met a horse before. Yeah. So that was kind of cute. Um, but that is such a good trail. And it, I actually think having people out there helps really does help. Um, I see my, my, my regular guy, I call him Walden, uh, is back. I know exactly where he's tenting. Uh, but I think, you know, he's just like a modern hermit yes, or something. You know, he's clean. Right. He's on a little island. He, right. you know, he stays out of the way. Not really sure, you know, if I'm ready for the the, <laughs> the naked sunbathing right. part of that equation. But, you know. <laughs> well, did you see the, um, I don't know if you saw, Joe Kelly posted some pictures. And it is daunting that some of these camps and some of the um, degree at which these people who we believe are incapable of making decisions will go to. So it does make me go, wait a minute, if you're, if you're with it enough to do, pull this off, you might be with it enough to sign up for it. I mean, I will honestly tell you, I, 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 I have always been a fan of a good uh, junkie movie, addict movie, books, yeah. true stories, turning your life around kind of stuff. And you know, you, well, you, you got to hustle in that life. They, and I always think, wow, you know, if you just actually applied the, some these of that, skills right, to, to something you know, else. a sales well, job or something. On the walking bridge. So the walking bridge is built over an old railroad trestle. Apparently the oh, homeless are... had dragged plywood up and built a whole mm -hmm. platform. Mm -hmm. I mean, the fire department had a kind that's, of... Uh, that's on river at the river near the, the baseball yeah, park. Right, it's the actual yeah. walk, the Hands Across America, or Hands Across Merrimack Bridge, Hands Across America. <laughs> um, but if you've got the wherewithal to do all that, I have to believe you also have the wherewithal to know that there's places where you can seek help. And also, since New Hampshire has the lowest unemployment at record lows as summer heats up, I'm seeing uh, work signs everywhere. everywhere. It's always. Um, I'm sure, you know, maybe maybe a gentle entry sometimes for those kinds of things is like a landscaping yeah. job so that you're used to, you know, um, being outside a little bit. Working in the kitchen, you know, that kind of stuff. Of thing. And those so, jobs, I'll, uh, you know, as much as it doesn't sound like it's not a glamour job but restaurant dishwashers they're always looking for people to do behind the scenes work in restaurants so um i did watch and then i go ahead keep oh going. no i was go, just going. gonna mention i don't know if you saw this in today's paper but they did say alderman hit yes. pause on new city yes, department so focusing on homelessness yes. initiatives. so i brought that because um so two things the um uh, committee on accounts enrollment and revenue administration and i'm not super familiar with the process is at the city level i mean i can tell you how the state all the steps so um it the board of mayor and aldermen on the second of the month i believe not last night two weeks ago yeah. voted to create a new department 
Yeah, it might have been a month ago. Okay, I feel so maybe like it was on the April it. 16th, yeah. right? And we were so, like, wait a so second. So they do that, <laughs> but then it has to go to the Committee on Accounts Enrollment and Revenue Administration okay. to actually change the ordinance. Okay, which From what sense, I can understand. Right? So on um, last night, am I correct? Today's the 17th. Last night, that committee met. That met committee is chaired by Alderman Mary Heath, has Pat Long, Joe Lavasser, Kevin Kaffin uh, and Bill Barry, and then um, our new alderman, uh, Christy Chris Cantor, was sitting in, so I assume she'll be on that. She wasn't voting because okay, she's new. She's probably, you know. She's not even sworn in, maybe. No, I think she was sworn in, but yeah. I just oh, feel okay. like she's like, yeah, I'm not going to vote on anything. <laughs> so um, they voted on a few things. One was they changed the city charter to pay the, st the mayor the $100,000 a year salary, so that's now changed. Then they, um, good Lord. Then they chain, they had a vote on changing to create a new department of housing stability. And I did watch the, um, I watched their meeting and Pat Long made the motion to table it. He says, I'm not ready to make this a department right now. I think there's too many questions still. Joe Lavasser had concerns about, um, the name, because he said, if we're making it the housing stability, shouldn't that be part of economic development and zoning? Because we're conflating two things. We're taking somebody who was hired to deal with the homeless and we're gonna put her in charge of a housing stability department, which infers that she's going to be dealing with housing things as opposed to homeless things. So that that's legit. Well, I mean, I right. get what he's saying. Like, how are you gonna dismantle it if the homeless problem, if it's called housing stability? Um, Bill Barry, I believe, was the second to Pat's motion to table. Uh, Lavasser, Barry, um, I, uh, yeah, it said it. Uh, yeah. Lavasser, Barry, and Long voted Long, to table. Yeah. Kavanaugh voted not to table, and Mary Heath just didn't vote at all. Um, Three to one. Yeah. So it's on the table for now, which means it probably won't be brought up to this committee for another couple weeks. The third thing. Um, that I want to, we can come back to, or we can jump back and forth a little bit. The third thing that they voted on was to change the accessory dwelling unit. Or to make it easier. Um, so I pulled that up because well, I wanted to see. Well. So the basic change um, is ADUs in Manchester can now be a standalone structure. They do not have to be in a detached oh, garage. Oh, that's actually great. So or you could attached a to the house. Shed or so a... you could build a separate unit on your property um a couple things and i don't think these are onerous these are things that are still there um has to be single family home so a multi-family home can't build an adu and i'm like okay and one of the units has to be occupied by the owner again i'm okay with that um something that i know it'll bother you but i'm like well i know why they're doing it um you have to provide there has to be a parking space i know parking bothers you but i'm just saying that's that's in it. If you want to build an ADU, you have to have some place for one car. Um, Unless the person who lives there rides a I bicycle. I, so I you did. can't make a rule that has to apply to everyone because now no one can build the ADU. But, well, that's Arr. not true. Not no one. I just think they don't want... I think there's concerns from people that you're going to build these where there isn't places to park already. So can I that, ask, can I genuinely ask, having come from New York City, San Francisco, we're Johannesburg. Not in, we're not in any of those places. We're in Manchester. Right. So, this so is have how it you is. ever struggled to find parking ever in this city? Yes. When? When Trump was here? I mean, no. Like, if you live if on, a, if you live on event, a busy, no. If you live on a busy street and you don't have off street parking, you have struggled to park, find places to park. When there's one, two, three. I mean, there are I know that when we have the new movers party on the west side, we hear from neighbors that they're like, man, I couldn't find parking. And I'm like, yeah, because a, a hundred people came in street, for an event. The street that I used to live on, on Parker Street, had only one side parking. Same with Winter Street, one side parking. The three houses. How many cars and units and things do you have? Six. Six in your backyard, right? You got to get three cars. I'm, I'm not a, talking about, I'm talking about so, Parker Street had, I had parking, off street parking, so that wasn't a problem. But there was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven units, seven apartments. I feel like I'm leaving somebody out. Seven apartments on that street and there were four parking spots on the street. So if you didn't have an off, a spot, 
you had to try to find one on park on winter but winter also oh you what? had to walk a whole block no, i would rather have people struggle to find parking than have homeless people i'm not in my disagreeing park. i'm just saying we are not in a large we're <laughs> this not is not gonna that. make anything available to anyone of course it where would. are you this... gonna magically find new parking spots are we gonna make well, them out of thin air you would make you would have room in your driveway for them that's what they're saying it can't be in, so basically this these units can't be in the highly congested neighborhoods. You could build something in your yard because you have parking. You have on-street parking. I could build something in my yard. I have parking for them. M many neighborhoods could build a separate unit outside of their home now. Um, but let me go on to some of the other things. So they increased the size. It used to be 750 square feet limit. Now it is 900 square feet. Um, can't exceed the height of the principal structure. Like, okay, these are all just common things, I think. Um, you have to record a deed saying that if you sell your property, the owner has to, you know, there's, because there is restrictions. Um, I did find it interesting. ADUs located completely within an existing principal structure. So that would be if I put the apartment that was in my basement back in my basement. Or within an existing detached structure, such as a garage or a carrot house, shall not require a conditional use permit. Minor exterior alterations of extru structure, such as, as the addition of an ex uh, external stairway, shall not require a conditional use permit. So I do think it's not perfect. It doesn't open it up completely, but it does open up um, ADUs to not have to be attached to a house in manchester all right i will take it folks it i is, think the parking thing nothing. just doesn't I really help does. anything uh, but it's, it's already in there parking's already it, it wasn't a new addition the parking was already in there it didn't it doesn't change um the, back to the homeless committee or homeless department i did go back and watch the presentation from the alderman meeting weeks from ago. two weeks ago mm -hmm. um it was different I did, I, I do kind of feel like um, that that position, the homeless coordinator, whatever her name is, it doesn't matter who the person is, that position's been there for um, since 2021. She's been in that job since late, la sometime last fall. Um, we've gone through a winter cycle where we have had a homeless shelter, which is still open on Beach Street. So we've had this for you know, at least three months in place. And listening to it, it kind of sounds like they never quite get things going. You know, like some of the things that they wanted to do in this day shelter, um, they call it an engagement center over at um, the Elks Club, which I, I'm also going to say, and Alderman Lavasser was like, wait, so... We don't know where the locations are. They say there's two to three locations that they're looking at, but the aldermen don't know what those locations are. So the people don't know what those locations are. So they want to make a, a move on one of them. And, and the homeless coordinator, um, her answer was, well, there will be public information when it comes back to you to vote on it. That's not transparency. <laughs> transparency would be, hey, look, we're looking at these three locations. Um, is there community feedback? That's that's a that's a big problem in the city. Is they're doing things that the aldermen don't really know about, and then they <laughs> expect the public to not have an opportunity to chime in because saying it's a public it's a public hearing when the aldermen are actually going to vote on it is, is not, not transparent. That's not a transparent. No. But it was I was listening to so many things like she was saying, people don't have the ability like these homeless people don't have the ability to access services because um, they just don't have the mental capacity because they're they're str under stress and trauma. Um, she didn't seem to actually know for sure how many campsites there are, which, and she was like, well, that's because we call them different things. You might call it this name, we might, and I thought, I don't know, did nobody think to just use a GPS pin? like? months into this this isn't a two-week process that we're gearing up this has been months um the same plans seem to be in place for the shelter while it's open as will be in place when the shelter closes so it 
it seems kind of peculiar to me that um, we're doing it backwards. We're saying we need to open this, this engagement center without having all the ducks in the row about what the engagement center would do and implementing them prior to it's it's right and it's and as hard. we said last week i mean i don't know what the status is currently with that elks building, i don't believe but it's available any longer so so that's kind of the, the what i heard as well probably from you probably from me but um but you know that was just that that was not a that, it wasn't, uh, a, it wasn't a good well, idea. Say, you know, like we would, you know, Manchester is actually kind of a cool little city. Well, I mean, and we don't it, mean to knock down neighborhoods that aren't already. I mean, that's affected, that, that neighborhood first struggles in its own. Right, but also you don't want to put like something right across from a fancy restaurant. Nope. On that the highway. on the highway where literally anyone who's coming to the city is like, drives oh, oh, in they're just there? gonna be like what like i have such a bad impression of boston now because i got lost going to some art exhibit and i ended up like i must have been like the wharf or something but there were thousands it was a thousands of tent strong tent and city with people literally sitting from me to that microphone shooting yeah. up and I was just like, what? Oh, right. how, how can this even be yep. Boston? Well, and I wondered, I was looking first, because I was trying to find, there used to be an engagement center that was put, it was called the Helping Hands. Um, they Helping Hands. Mm, I don't them. like that jargon. It's no, not an engagement center. An, I Let's not well, call it their nonsense That's what they're words. saying. But I'm wondering why the engagement isn't already happening. You've got shelters in place. Why are we not engaging? Now, I know Victoria went and volunteers at some of these shelters. She was at the Beach Street shelter with her son and she said she did not see any engagement between the staff and the people at all, not even remotely. So I understand when they say this has got to be based on trust, you know, like you have to build trust and then there has to be uh, make them connected to the services. But I'm like, how much, how long does it take? Because there's, there's, one particular girl that sticks out in my mind that I see outside of families in transition. She's young, she looks able-bodied, she can speak to a camera just fine. She has been in every picture like that I can ever remember for years. So how much engagement and trust do we have to build or are some of these people just not interested in that engagement? In which case, those are probably the people that, we're, that mo people are most upset about. Um, there's, it's just a strange, I, I keep, I was listening to it and there's a gentleman who runs, Jake King runs the Beach Street Shelter. He also has a company that does something similar and he used to run the Concord engagements. And, you know, like if there just seems to be, there's enough question about motives and who's responsible and what the goals and, are uh, and who's receiving the money and where is right. the money going to because again you know i i think you know uh, we're we're creating industries and business based on the wrong incentives right. like if you start an entire department that now gets a budget line in the budget you it's have never created an incentive away. for someone to be like i must protect this right. at all costs right. more homeless well, more I mean, homeless look at the bus situation <laughs> you know we've got manchester transit which is the bus you know as uh, the buses and anybody who watches the bus system that closed down though right no like no the that's just that bus station the okay. manchester Trans that was bus for like um to get on to go to Boston, that, right? right which I mean, now you have to go to London, Derek. And, but, and that's just becoming an eyesore right, right there as well. And, but I mean, the regular city buses, the red buses, nobody, most people will say there's nobody riding them. Because every time they go by, there's no, maybe one or two people. One or two people. And then I noticed, because we talked about this a couple of years ago, and then I was like, did they tint the windows? Well, because now you can't tell so, there's no one in so there. So nobody's riding these big buses. So common sense would say, we probably either need smaller buses so or more routes that better accommodate or, or something. Or a voucher for an Uber. But so, there's no you know, incentive to eliminate the existing system and that's a good example of right is it really the most effective use p way to transport people around if we're never seeing no like even even with this trails uh transit to trails the girl from the parks department said she was a little uh disappointed because they use school buses because it's during the summer 
school buses can't transport bikes. If it was a city bus, oh yeah, they would have the bike rack. Oh, and that they would be could, nice. And you could ride yeah. your bike through the park. Right. Yeah, you can't. So yeah, yeah. Oh. Um, so I think there is problems. I think um, I think the things that frustrate the public are different than the things that they well, seem I to address. Well, I think what's also happening is I think there's a shift in the discourse. And I think it's important uh, that people like us, you know, we've been talking about these issues for men, you know, as long as I've been yeah. on this show anyway. And, you know, people are like, you're so callous, no. you're so mean, you're so whatever. But it's like, look, if we're at the stage where you're actually um, – disadvantaging the people who who actually are the functioning productive yes. people in society yes. like if i have to step over poop on main street in order to go somewhere that doesn't seem right i do pay my taxes right so i think what's happened is uh you know go free speech is a lot of people have just started to say well this isn't acceptable and honestly i don't think it's acceptable to to them either We're not right like I'm, right. I'm like if you create this perpetual cycle where someone's never allowed to truly hit rock bottom then they're, they're not actually going to fix their problems yep. this lady that you just mentioned who's always in the things it's like well if you've been the spokesperson from the street for like three years why, why aren't you fixing like, why like, like, like uh, at some stage well, you kind of have to look in the mirror and go and and if, if she's continually there, is this process of creating, building trust, cre offering services and getting them stability actually working when some of these people never seem to come off the streets? I saw two gentlemen. I felt bad for them. It's not that I don't feel bad, but there were two older men. One's holding a sign saying he's a veteran, like right on the sidewalk. Yeah, they I weren't know, even on the yeah. corner. They're Now they're just on Elm Street randomly walking with signs. And Bill Berry and Joe Lavasser both voiced their concerns that they feel that we offer so many services in Manchester that we are not dis so, we are attracting more people. Yeah. And you know, there is the argument that homeless people tend to migrate to urban centers because one, they can they can blend in better. There tends to be public bathrooms, although Manchester doesn't have any. Um, there are more services available there. They have a community. I mean and I'm thinking, yeah, and drugs are, Joe said it, dr drugs are much more freely available in Manchester than, say, Bedford. Yeah. Um, we're going to run out of time. Are um, we? <laughs> tomorrow is Thursday. It is uh, New, New Hampshire House is in session. They are voting on the Parental Bill of Rights. Um, we, we'll probably talk about that next week. And I I'll saw be, the uh, the pop bill kind of went down in well, flames. Well, it did, and then, but then it bubbled back up. And then because, I saw Sununu actually yeah. said, Governor Sununu said, oh, well, maybe. But I also heard that that was sort of after the House kind of said, hey, Senate, I'd be really sorry yeah. if, like, stuff It'll happens to your we'll stuff. What happens. This is what happens at the end of the year in May and June. There's... There's deal making and things that the Senate wants get tagged onto um, bills that they have to get approval from the House. You know, honestly, so I, I'm just like everyone should just do civil disobedience. Just do what you want. Who cares? We've been trying to do this for literally 50 I, I'm years. I'm actually surprised Where, at how Jeb many. Bradley like got up and did a press conference where he was like, "Well, you know, we really should study this a little more." And I was like, "How much well, should we study it this? Was, it's been 14 it years." It was disappointing to hear Republican senators regurgitate things that just really aren't accurate um marijuana does not contribute to gun violence <laughs> that's just not a thing but these are the these alcohol are, on the other great. hand that the state um, likes to sell you does so yeah anyway we're anyways. gonna run out of time 30 seconds um enjoy the week <laughs> the weather's good uh we'll be back next week hopefully um Parental rights will pass tomorrow and get a, a head over towards the governor's desk. Uh, again, uh, we'll see. I think everyone should just do what they want. That's Thanks. it from me. Bye. Bye.